The law of return continues to be a major obstacle to other Jewish believers in Jesus who wish to immigrate to Israel. This reporter visited the Tel Aviv Anti-Missionary Office of Yad Lahim, an ultra-Orthodox group that monitors Messianic activity. This religious organization is staffed by volunteers and serves the Jewish community in a variety of social functions. One of their primary concerns is to seek out missionaries living in the land, expose them, and demissionize Jewish converts. This document, proudly displayed in the Tel Aviv office and in other prominent places throughout Israel, issues a serious warning to all new immigrants. It says, Beware of trusting missionaries who disguise themselves as genuine Jews, missionaries who promise gracious benefits and material assistance while preaching recognition of the principles of Christianity. This very moment, the document declares, hundreds of dangerous missionaries are combing the country hunting for the masses of new immigrants who have arrived here. The document continues and warns, do not be led astray by these soul hunters whose power comes from enormous sums of money. Representatives of Yad Lahim assure us that they do not engage in acts of violence or intimidation in order to drive missionaries out of the country. And although we have no evidence to dispute their claim, we have heard reports that the anti-missionary hit squad targets certain dangerous missionaries and have at times resorted to less than honorable tactics. Such reports include stories of slander to discredit one individual, while another story tells of a believer's house being burned down. Whether true or not, the fact is that the anti-missionary office of Yad Lahim has an active interest in keeping these believers out of Israel. In a telephone interview, a Mrs. Judith Zevi, head of the Jerusalem office and most familiar with this particular issue, says that if these families win, others will move here. Her concern is that Christian missionaries will separate the Jew from his Judaic roots. She says that missionizing is a central tenet of their faith. The families insist they have never missionized here, and Zaevi concedes that she has no evidence they have. But she says that is only because they have been careful and are waiting for citizenship before they begin to missionize. During our conversation, Zaevi commented that every Jew has the right to believe as he chooses as long as he or she does not try to missionize or influence others. Her only justification for wanting the families expelled is that they may someday missionize, which is in fact a legal activity so long as money isn't offered as an inducement for conversion. For whatever real reason that fear is expressed, and for whatever excuse is made, it is clear that these three families and many other would-be Jewish immigrants who believe in Jesus are being discriminated against because of personal religious beliefs. No other free country in the world dares to tell its people what they may or may not believe about such personal matters. It is apparent that the majority of Israeli citizens believe that these families we've met, and others like them, have a right to live in Israel. It is only a small religious group that opposes their immigration. Isn't it true that once you're Jewish, you're Jewish to the end, to the very finish? no matter what you believe. How can believing in Jesus alter one's Jewish heritage? In fact, nothing could be more Jewish than to believe in Jesus. He is a Jew. His early followers were Jewish, and history indicates that thousands of Jews, including many priests, believed in him as the Messiah. So how can believing in Jesus nullify one's Jewishness? There have been many false messiahs throughout Israel's history. Most recently, a sect of Judaism proclaimed their faith and Rabbi Menachem Mendel Sneerson of New York as the Messiah. Of course, that belief soon proved to be false, but only after an extensive public campaign to identify Sneerson as the Messiah. So, tell me please, does having believed in Sneerson revoke their Jewish heritage? Are these religious Jews who believed in him still Jewish? Of course they are, and you would laugh at anyone who said otherwise. So if you can be Jewish and believe in any number of messiahs, or not believe in God at all, why can't you believe in Jesus and still be Jewish? According to Rabbi Goldstein of the Mount Zion Synagogue, true Judaism does not know who the Messiah is, but are eagerly expecting his arrival any day. Basically, we see that uh, the prophecy is happening after 2,000 years old, the Jews are now coming back to uh, Israel, which is, we see it's the place of refuge. 
and uh, we see like everything is happening now and and it, it should happen very soon with God's help. Do you know who the Messiah is? No, that we don't know yet. To briefly review the situation, we have three families seeking citizenship in Israel. They are being denied access to their ancestors' homeland because they believe that Jesus is the Messiah. The majority of Israeli citizens believe that they and others like them have the right to live in Israel. The general view is that if Jewish blood flows through their veins, then they are Jewish no matter what they believe. One young Jewish man said it very well. If they are enough Jewish to be considered Jewish by the world, then they are Jewish. These families and others like them would have perished in Hitler's ovens under his definition of who is a Jew. As believers, in the words of Jesus and the Jewish prophets of old, we know that all of man's current plans for peace will fail and that Israel will be surrounded by the armies of the world. If the prophets are to be believed, Israel, your great friend and ally, the United States, will fail to support and protect you in your time of greatest need. The day is coming when you will stand alone against the world. You will know this is true when you see the United States negotiating with your enemies. There will be a major shift in America's foreign policy toward Israel, or America will be rendered powerless and no longer considered a military threat to your enemies. You will stand alone, isolated against the world. You will once again hide in your shelters, waiting to see what the next morning brings and many Gentile Christians who claim to love you will desert you, not wanting to share in your fate. When that great and terrible day comes, many Jews and Gentiles will die. Now, if these Jews who believe in Jesus are right in their belief, and they are, then you will know it. If not, by letting them take refuge in Israel, you have only gained support from those who love you. So, dear Jewish friends, in the name of the one true God of Israel, open up your arms and take to yourself those who love you, those who will fight for you, and those who will die for you. What else can you ask of a fellow Jew? To shed his blood alongside his brothers is the ultimate sacrifice. Israel, open your heart and let all of God's people stay. Amend the law of return to include Jews who believe in Jesus. You will discover their love and loyalty is firm and solid. So again, Israel, open your arms and receive those who love you. And may the God of heaven bless you. May he be gracious to you and give you peace both now and forevermore.